some fast solar wind from some dark coronal holes are going to give us another chance for aurora, and big solar flares could be on the rise again as new regions rotate into Earth view. Those stories and more are in this week's Spotlight. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com dot edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week picks up in unexpected ways. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view that are rotating to the west limb, but believe it or not, this side of the sun is actually the boring side. The more interesting side is actually coming up closer to the east limb. In fact, as we watch this filament, take a look at this very dense filament here, Oh, right about early on the 26th, you can watch it launch, whoosh, in a gorgeous display. Here's the replay with Subi. I'm going to pause it right there. You can actually see how incredibly dense this structure was. Now, this is not an Earth-directed solar storm, but it does remind us that these filaments can be very, very dense. And if they were to be Earth-directed, they could give us a decent solar storm. So we have to keep our eyes on them. But... Believe it or not, that's not even the whole story because really where we're looking at with why this, this whole region kind of erupted is because we've got these massive coronal holes both in the north and in the south. These coronal holes are sending some fast solar wind, which kind of makes this kind of an unstable bed. So no wonder the filament got up and left, right? Meanwhile, these regions are likely going to merge over this next mm, solar rotation or so. So expect to see a trans-equatorial coronal hole here over this next 27 days, and this is going to start giving us some fast solar wind in a repetitive basis over probably the next six months. We're going to see fast solar wind basically every two weeks. As this coronal hole rotates through center disk, you can see how large it is. It's a very well-formed coronal hole, and we're going to get some fast solar wind that's going to last probably two to three days looking at the width of this thing. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you're definitely going to get an extended show. We might even see aurora coming down into mid-latitudes for a little while, which will also give us a nice show, possibly even some red aurora, depending upon how fast the solar wind is from this region. Now, as we look beyond it, we also have some new regions that are rotating into Earth view. These new regions are actually a bit more flare active. We've already seen a little bit of more flare activity than we have over this past week. And as we take a look at our far side from the JSOC HMI Helioseismology far sided viewer, we take a look. This is the uh, Earth side of the sun in gray. The far side is in gold. And as we watch the dates here over this last week or so, you can see those dark regions right there on the sun's far side. That is these regions that have just rotated into Earth view. They have lasted a far side passage, and they're not the only ones. We also have region 3957, 3968, 64. You can even see 30, uh, 9, 3859. These regions are all surviving their far side passage. These will be rotating into Earth view here in this next week. So expect that solar flux to rise. Expect the big flares uh, risk to start rising once again. And we could see the threat for radio blackouts. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you've got a few more days of a respite, but expect everything to get a lot more active over this next week. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from those big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active to then minor storm and then possibly major storm conditions by around the first or the second. And this is because we have that extended uh, fast solar wind from because the coronal hole is so large. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, we could see up to about a 50 or 60% chance of a major 
major storm over the early part of the month. So get your batteries charged and get ready because it could be a beautiful show. Now at mid latitudes, well, the story is almost the same. We're only expecting active to minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about, man, let's say maybe a 10% chance of a major storm likely not going to happen. But you could get, especially in through the first and second, we could easily see minor storm conditions. But remember, we have that bright moon, so it may be a little bit difficult to catch. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting in the mid 160s for solar flux right now. We could see that dip possibly a little bit with this coronal hole as it rotates through the Earth strike zone. It kind of makes the sun be a little bit more dark than we'd expect but it's going to recover quite quickly, especially with those new regions rotating into Earth view. NOAA's giving us about a 35 to 40% chance of M-class flares over the next day or two. This is at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. We're sitting about moderate noise right now on the bands that's probably going to rise over the course of this week, but will still likely stay pretty low when it comes to X-class flares. So the risk for R3 level radio blackouts will remain reasonably low It'll easily as we move through the rest of this week. Week, but it's next week that I'm thinking that these risks might rise a bit more. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you have a little bit more time to kind of enjoy the quiet, but expect the noise to start picking up. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is pretty much in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. NOAA's giving us only about a 1% chance of a radiation storm at an S1 to S2 level. That'll be about over the next few days. But as the week continues and more of these big regions rotate back into Earth view, expect that risk to rise just a little bit. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew and you high-risk passengers, guess what? Pretty much everything is in the green this week, so you're all in the clear. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. We do have that big coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next few days. It could give us some extended uh, fast solar wind. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, expect to get some dazzling shows, especially as we move into the early part of February. But then aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, you know, you might be able to catch some shows as well. It's all going to be dependent upon whether that bright moon is going to be drowning out the aurora or not. So stay on your toes, but only if you're dedicated should you chase. And now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we've been enjoying a little bit of quiet. I mean, when we have those big coronal holes, there's not a lot of room for big active regions. So things get a little bit quiet and you see that solar flux dip a little bit, but it's going to start rising again. And we've got those new active regions rotating into Earth view and more on their way. So expect the latter part of this week, you're going to start seeing the noise on the band really start picking up. You're going to see the risk for radio blackouts start picking up. You might even, uh, we might even pop a few radio blackouts, but likely it's going to stay at the R1 to R2 level. Not sure about next week, but this week you should be reasonably okay. So just hang in there. And then you GPS users, well, you know, the day side is not going to be too bad because we're still kind of dealing with reasonably uh, quiet conditions, but we are going to have some extended storming on the night side of Earth. So expect that if you're going to be anywhere near aurora over the next few days, you're going to have to calibrate your magnetometers often, and you're going to need to check to make sure that your GPS reception is okay. But outside of that, everything should be all right. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.